Okay, on the bench today is a small device I've made which is basically a, a light sensor. So what we have here is just an LM358 op amp. It's got a resistor, a small capacitor, and I'm using an LED actually as the, the sensor itself. So basically all you do is you hook it up to a battery. When you flood the LED with light, it, uh, you know, runs into the circuit and then, you know, it gives you a nice um, voltage on this uh, yellow wire. So it's, you know, really quite simple. It's, I got the design off some other guy. Um, I saw it on YouTube. Um, he specified some other uh, photo diode or something for this sensor, but I couldn't get it and I could get a few others that were kind of like it. But after I did a bit of testing, I actually decided I just want to bung this in and, and see if it would work. And, you know, it did. So, um, if you, um, an LED, if you actually hit it with light, you'll actually generate um, a voltage on the, the other side of it. So, I'm exploiting that fact really just to turn the op amp on and, you know, create the voltage on the output. The current is obviously very low, um, like you won't power anything with it. Um, I did actually mess around with a, a second potential device, but I couldn't really get it to work the way I wanted to. And basically it was just uh, two transistors in a Darlington pair. And it is very, you know, very sensitive, very quick to react. And it, it uh, varies the output intensity, you know, quite well with the, um, with the, the amount of light that's hitting it. But for the purpose of, of what I actually built this for, uh, this actually works quite well. Because um, all I really want to do is I actually want to get that pulse out the other side. Now what is this for? It's actually to test camera shutter speed. Because actually you might notice that there is actually another thing on this bench that wasn't there before, and that's an oscilloscope. So that arrived last week, so um, I thought this would be actually a really excellent project for me to 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 build and to play around with the oscilloscope. So I'll just pause it here and then we'll hook it all up. Okay, I'll hook this up. Basically the earthen probe goes, you know, to a, a negative terminal there. The probe goes onto that yellow wire. And then basically all we do is we put this behind the camera, we shine a torch on it and then we you know release the shutter so we can have a look at what happens and i'll point that uh, camera actually on towards the scope i might just lower this down a bit so we can see what's going on okay so this should be good enough for us to uh, get an idea of what's going on so as you can see we just hold that behind there um, put a torch on there and did I wind this on? Yes, I did. Okay, so we just need to set the trigger over here. Okay, I had the trigger level set a bit too low, so it helps, you know, to, to raise it up. So hopefully now, there we go. So as we can see, like these are two millisecond divisions per thing. So we've got two of those, so that's four milliseconds. So, you know, a little bit of maths later and you'll figure out, you know, about how long your shutter speed's going for. Now this is an automatic shutter speed. Um, originally I thought, you know, I could adjust the shutter speed, but it's actually the, uh, the film sensitivity, so the ISO. So anyway, it um, it just demonstrates basically this uh, mechanism and this contraption here. Okay, so the purpose that of doing this really is that we want to, um, for some of these old cameras that we have and that we've bought, is that uh, we've tested them and the exposure isn't showing up correctly. Um, now okay. some of these are, you know, they're automatic exposure and all that sort of thing, so that's that's fine. But uh, we do have the option, yeah. like I said, with with some of these to lie to the camera and tell it that it's got a different film speed in it. So in that way, we can maybe compensate. But to compensate, we actually need to know what's happening. You know, is it uh, consistently slower? Is it consistently faster? But if if we've got no way to measure it. You know just trial and error we're going to go through a lot of film before we actually figure out what's going on so anyway this will just help us um work out what's you know maybe worth shooting what needs maybe a bit of attention um 
where we've got a couple of these cameras, I think I've only got one of these pen EEs, but we've got a couple of other AGFAs and they're actually, you know, probably good enough that uh, it's, it's worth investigating, maybe, you know, servicing the mechs on those. Um, but we do need to know sort of roughly what, what they're doing first. Um, because it could be the Mac, it could be, you know, part of the sensor system that we're not aware of. Um, but we just need to have an idea of what's going on and then we can figure out what adjustments, if any, that we can make to the system. Okay, as I mentioned, this is the second design that I actually um, tried, or, you know, one of two designs. The other one was a Darlington pair uh, of transistors, um, you know, which would actually be a lot cheaper because there's really nothing else to it. There's like two transistors, there might have been one resistor in there, and that's it. Um, the thing I was a bit concerned about with it was that uh, perhaps it was a bit sensitive because it really, um, you know, just the slightest bit of light, even like that, and it would start showing, which is a good thing. And, you know, it, if you hook up another LED on the other side of that, you can really see that it... Um, alters the brightness as you come over and over and you shine more light in it, it like it gets really bright and I can actually see some uses for that and I can see how that would work for other applications but for this one I was just a bit concerned that maybe it's a bit too sensitive and you know if you've got the back off a camera like this you know you're going to be mucking around setting trigger points and all this sort of stuff whereas you really just want something that's a bit more definite it's like bang there's your pulse thank you very much um, so I didn't really think that this, that amount of sensitivity was actually warranted. Um, you know, I might be wrong, but uh, this this works well, and you know, it's like I said, it's maybe two dollars a part as opposed to well, what's a couple of transistors. You know, they're maybe a few cents each. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. So I've hand drawn some the schematic for this. So if you want to have a look at that and maybe have a go at building your own. I mean, it's actually very simple, but uh, I'll just leave that in the, there's a link in the description and you can just, you know, download and do what you like with it. And, you know, maybe you find a, a better way or you've got some suggestions on how that can be better, you know, go for it. Um, like I said, it's not actually my design. I guess it was my idea to throw an LED in there as the sensor, but, you know, it, that was as much to prove that that actually would work as anything else.